Every day I get uh, an enormous amount of emails and I'd just like to say thank you so much for that. I really appreciate them. If you're sending me links, it would be great if you could just explain what's in the link rather than just a link. I really can't get a chance to see those if I don't know what the video is about. And also, I do read all the emails, so thank you for that, but uh, I can't always reply, so it's just not enough hours in the day. But I had a lovely email from a gentleman called Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. And he put forward a strange concept that I was unaware of, so I had to go off and do a little bit of research and sort of understand what he was suggesting is um, a, a, a hypothesis, I suppose, for what could be happening and what's possibly behind things. Now, I'm hoping that this isn't the case. I'm hoping that what I'm actually going to say is complete and utter nonsense and that it has no basis whatsoever. And, and maybe there's some clever people out there who can actually tell me that that is the case. However, let me, let me explain what I understand that Anthony was sort of putting forward. Uh, because it is can it is sort of worrying really like so many of these things and i don't want to get too worried because let's try and look at the lighter side of life and not to get too depressed about things however it he seemed to think that um that possibly that one of the things that's going on at the moment this sort of push towards a digital economy the uh, digital ID cards, for example, the central bank digital currency, the idea of heading towards net zero, saving the planet that apparently is, uh, you know, on the brink of uh, warming up thanks to CO2, which is um, a complete and utter ridiculous notion, by the way. And if you, if it's the first time you've heard the theory that uh, actually the uh, global warming's not a thing, uh, it isn't a thing, by the way. I mean, it's warming up a little bit, but not to the catastroph catastrophic nature that a lot of the uh, the catastrophists are trying to push so you know um, but anyway you may believe in that that doesn't really matter in this instance because what Anthony was sort of getting at if I've understood this correctly is one of the things that that seems to be the government is really pushing towards us is this digitization of everything I, I noticed that they're even trying to get us to microchip uh, pets. You know, I'd like to see them do that, really. Uh, how would you microchip, um, a, say, a, a gerbil or indeed a goldfish? Not quite sure you could do that. Maybe you can get it on the fin. You probably could so that you can tell and, you know, probably so that you get them taxed or that they can take them away if, if uh, I don't know, a gerbil has uh, farted too many times and you take it away and shove it on a bonfire somewhere to, you know, get rid of, saves, saves the planet. Anyway, the point being is that all of this sort of pushing, this not so much pushing, this absolute thrusting nudge of uh, shoving us towards this digital world uh, is a bit of a distraction, really. It's a bit of a something that we're all going to end up doing, but unknown to us, there's a bigger disaster coming. Now, what that is, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, this is a coronal mass ejection. Yes, I'd never heard of it. Uh, this is effectively from the sun. You see, apparently astronomers or cosmonauts or people who look up into space have been studying the sun for many generations, of course, and they've noticed these solar flares, these magnetic fields that come flying out of the sun at periods uh, relatively regularly. And there was one, I think it was called the Carrington effect or something like that, uh, back in 1859 or some sort of time in the, in the 19th century. Anyway, the point being, there was this massive great big flare that knocked out all the electric, all the grids, all the computers, all the, uh, the mobile phones, all the telephone lines, everything back in 1850. Wait a minute, they didn't have any of that back in 1859, so that couldn't have happened. Well... The, the solar flare happened, but the response to it wasn't as great as it would have been if it was now. And apparently in 2025 is going to be a peak of a rather massive one. They're sort of predicting, although it's very difficult to say actually when these things are going to happen, but they're kind of predicting that there's going to be this massive great big flare, this uh, coronal mass ejection in which will wipe out all the electricity grids, uh, the computers, mobile phones, telephones, satellites, everything basically that runs on electricity. Uh, I don't quite know how it works. It's sort of like 
blows them up and any of the uh, transistors and compressors and I don't know, you know, capacit capacitors, that's another thing. The old valve radios poof, will blow up. Not that we have those anymore, but you know what I mean? All the electronics and circuit boards are all going to fry with this massive radiation. Now, I don't know if this is true, but this is what uh, Anthony was saying. And I thought, well, if that was the case, if this, this mass, uh, coronal mass ejection, this magnetic field came and enveloped the Earth and blew everything up, not the satellites amiss, the consequences of that, of course, would be a, a catastrophic. It would be genuinely catastrophic because everything is running on electricity. Uh, you know, there'd be no running water, there'd be no uh, lights, there'd be no heating, uh, there'd be no deliveries, there'd be no supermarkets, there'd be no food production. Uh, the whole world would go into absolute chaos and we'd all be fighting one another to try and live. Now, he said that this, this mass, uh, coronal mass ejection wouldn't just be like one spike and it's over, that it could last for weeks, which would mean that no matter how hard you tried to fix the problem, everything would blow up immediately again and you'd get um, into serious problems. So you couldn't just sort of go, oh, I've got another circuit board, shove that in, because that would blow up immediately. So you would basically be, if this is true, uh, without power for possibly weeks or months or even a year. I mean, I don't know how long this sort of lasts, which means that we would be in a very difficult situation and that and of course hospitals wouldn't function the banks wouldn't function the uh, government could barely function we wouldn't really be able to talk to each other and worst of all of course i wouldn't be able to make my videos which would be very upsetting for me as you could probably understand what would we do if we didn't have youtube and other video platforms to entertain us and things like that so if this is a thing, and I'd love to know if this is a possible, likely, or um, one of those things that is, uh, you know, if, basically, if anybody knows anything about this, please, please let me know, because I can reassure people that it's all a load of nonsense, if it is. But reading about it, it does say that these magnetic uh, force fields can come in, they can knock these things out. And if there is one beyond all of our control, what would we do? And my thought was... Well, even if this isn't a thing, is it really sensible for us to put all our eggs in one basket? Is it sensible, for example, to push everything into a digital format, into this, uh, you know, with digital uh, banks, uh, these, these uh, what do you call them, central bank digital currency, the uh, digital ID cards, everything relying on electricity for our transport, for our heating, for our cooking, for our deliveries, for our food production, for the making water run. Maybe we should be thinking that actually what we do need is some form of backup, some analog system that we have got because even if it isn't this coronal mass ejection from the sun that's coming, we know that there are, you know, crooks and bad guys in the world who may sort of corrupt things and with fraud uh, or knock out computers. You know, terrorist acts could happen in which take out whole computers and banking systems and things that we would again, m perhaps not as prolonged, but certainly it would be so disruptive that if we put everything into one system, into a digital system, as, as useful and convenient and helpful and wonderful as it all seems, it seems to me to be extremely stupid to have this Achilles heel that makes it so vulnerable. And that in the old days of having photographs, for example, printed onto paper in albums, books written and, and printed in physical books so that you can open them up, um, banks in which you have real notes that you can actually exchange with one another and, if necessary, keep in a shoebox underneath your bed. Um, it, all these old-fashioned systems, record players, OK, the record player you could have as a wind-up one. There was um, somebody invented a wind-up radio. You know, if you're just reliant on electricity and digitization of ones and zeros all the time, it strikes me as this is a very silly and uh, dangerous thing to do because even, as I say, even if it isn't a solar flare from the sun that can do that, it would be possible that uh, nefarious people, as we've spoken about many times, could decide to control what you do and what you have. And as a free 
uh, people, as sovereign people who want to remain free, to be able to go where they want. If all the time you are being monitored or you're having your bank uh, decide whether you can buy things or not things or with a, an electronic system everything can be manipulated like a smart meter in your house but from somewhere else by somebody else, seems to me that that is a very ill-advised way to live. And uh, I think maybe we should be actually extremely cautious about throwing everything down that digital uh, method. So even though we have plenty of reasons why we don't want the government to have the power to be able to control us, there may be an even bigger force that's beyond humans, i.e. the sun, that uh, could potentially wipe us out. So even if, um, even if we wanted to go down that route, maybe that's ill-advised. So as I say, I'm hoping that what I'm talking about is a complete load of old trollops and that you would be able to come forward and say, no, Richard, that's never going to happen. But how do you know that a solar flare could not do that? So I'm saying, let's not put all our eggs in that basket. Maybe we should have, a, um, you know, have candles around in the house, have other ways of doing things, don't rely on the digital stuff. You see, the one that we've been told over the last few months, you know, there might be some electric um, power cuts and things like that. Have you heard those sort of things? Uh, oh, that, you know, expect power cuts or the power is going to drain, there's not enough power. And the reason I think that we haven't had it and the reason I think we won't have it is because if the government allow power cuts to happen now, it will show just how um, dependent we are on electricity and how dependent that we are on the internet and how dependent we are on these systems that run on electricity and that we'll suddenly wake up and go, actually, pound notes cash is far, far more superior when the power goes down that uh, things like a, a, an actual printed book, physical things are going to be much worth so much more if the power goes down than relying everything in some sort of ether, some cloud-based system, some computer-based system. Our mobile phones won't work, you know. So, I think that we won't be having electric power cuts because it will just demonstrate how vulnerable the Achilles heel of life if we push everything into that direction. So to me, actually, the analog world is king. Some of those old things I've been talking about, the old farming techniques that I've been talking about, food production in the old fashioned way, are going to be actually uh, so much more important. We're going to have to hold on to all of that. And that is why we should resist the digital purge that is being forced upon us. Let me know your thoughts in the comments or indeed on an email, but not too many, please. I get so many. And uh, let's discuss this. Is the analog way still worth holding on to with all our fingers and not disappear down the digital route.